Hello. I can see there's, there's someone waiting. Um, thank you very much for coming along. Um, as you know, this is going to be a regular a regular session. So I'm going to be running uh, a live fold every Friday at 8, every Wednesday at 2. And I hope this can be a place to kind of unwind, do something a little bit different, focus on just paper and actually find that there are many amazing, beautiful things that you can make. Each week, I'm going to make a different fold and I'm going to try to go for fairly um, sort of fairly topical themes. So I thought this week, this is actually um, a beautiful little basket, which uh, participant Rima, um, she sent me a photograph of a basket and she explained that her grandfather had taught her how to make this. And I think that's just beautiful because she has learned it from her grandfather and she's passed that on to me. And often we've learned uh, as children how to do origami and it becomes something quite special that maybe you'll pass on again. So it's kind of passing on in a good way. Um, so some of you it may be maybe after work and I'm very much dedicating these to my colleagues who work in hospital at UCH and I'm hoping this can be a place for people to come. I'm also just encouraging people generally we, we are staying at home to support you and um and it's important that we can do nice things to keep up our mood and morale as well so maybe this time can be an opportunity for new things to learn and origami is a wonderful thing because all you need is paper and i'm going to show you each time using just a normal piece of paper that you might have around oh great somebody else has joined as well i'll, I'll natter for a little bit just while we wait for people brilliant we've got a few more people that's fantastic so i've used actually um a piece of paper i'd already written on so it's kind of a scrap piece of paper and um i think actually it's quite charming if you use something that's had another purpose and this basket is a really clever design. It is a traditional piece and there's no glue involved at all. So it's quite strong. And I thought this could be quite fun because this weekend, obviously, it's, it's Easter and a really nice thing to do. If you have children, actually, you don't need children to do this. It's fun anyway, is to hide chocolates around the house. And if you're with somebody else to hunt them down, if it's if it's you by yourself, then enjoy as well. So hopefully this is useful. At the end, I'll also show you how to make a heart because I've ended up making actually a basket and putting little hearts in it as well. And I've started making hearts to put on my window. So I will show you in just a second um, how to make a basket, Rima's basket. Next week, actually, because I was asked uh, as well if there are other Easter things that I'll be doing. So next week, I don't normally do animals. But I'm going to be doing a rabbit. They're quite cute. So it's a little bit... A little bit of a slightly scale up, but we will do it. And I've been learning this and I'll be able to show you the principles behind it. But they're rather nice so you can make yourself a little rabbit. But that's for next week. It's always good to look ahead, isn't it? So the lighting's not quite as good as during the day, but I've, I've done my best to find a light. So if you all make sure that you've got a piece of paper, I'll try to go fairly slow because it's actually I'm encouraging you to take your time enjoy the process it's not about getting just to the end result it's about enjoying taking your time and I think when you take time then you're also taking care you're slowing down ah it's Rima well you're gonna know this design aren't you but I hope you don't mind um I think it's rather special that you're here so Rima works in a hospital and it's rather lovely to think that her grandfather taught her this so I'm going to get just a normal piece of paper and we're actually going to use the whole thing. So in a moment, we're going to tear off a strip, but actually keep that. So I'm going to get my board if you get something to press on and I'll direct the camera down, as it were. I've been learning all of this. This isn't what I would normally do. I'd normally work with people directly, but um, we're all having to adapt. And it's a great thing to embrace how we can still do things together. So first of all, we'll make a square. So again, taking the corner, if you've done a session with me before, you'll know this is how we start. And it's just that I'm keen to show you how to, how to do it from the very basic principles, build up confidence, rather than thinking you need special paper. You don't. Any paper will do. And being very accurate, so I've got that really lined up. And when I'm happy that it's in the right place, I give it a really good strong fold. That's what gives it the strength. 
So we're going to get rid of this strip at the bottom, but we're going to keep that. So we're going to turn it over. I hope, hope you've had a good day, Rima. And it's great to have you here. And I can see another couple of people there as well. <clears throat> it's a bit strange. I have to get used to sort of talking to myself, but I'm, I'm thinking of you at the same time. So we're folding back along that edge. And again, because I've given it a nice, good, strong fold, then I'll be able to tear this off. So some other exciting news. I don't know if you've seen. I've shared um, someone in Tehran got in touch and has offered to to do a fold so through zoom you'll actually be able to then see each other um it's going to teach how to make a kind of a moving mouth which is a very cool thing to do um so if you're free on sunday at four till five get in touch and i can send you the details if you haven't spotted already how to how to do that absolutely fine if you don't but just to let you know i'm quite excited about that i'll put this aside this is going to be the handle a bit later on so don't get rid of that so you've already done a nice diagonal line and we'll now do another diagonal line like so and as i said i i didn't know this before but it's only because of rima and it is a brilliant design and it seems as if this is, this is an old traditional piece of origami again so people will have handed on through many generations, but it really works. Oh, hello, Fiona. Hello, everyone. Excellent. Lovely to have you here. Great. So I hope, I hope Fiona, you're keeping up with this. So far, we've just made a square and we've done the diagonals. Now, as, as we've before, we've done the diagonals and then we'll turn it to the other side. And you may wonder why we're we doing that. It's because later on it will help it fold up. So our next step is to do a horizontal and I hope it's rather lovely to feel we are doing this together in time at this very moment and we're missing this contact and you can see my hands and this closeness that we're not able to do at the moment but at least this is a way we can. There we go, so we've done one horizontal line and now the next one like so. So there are what's called different bases. So origami often starts off with the same things. There we go. So you should be able to just pick it up and sort of push it together. Did you see? It just became a square. So you should be able to just push it together. I hope this is working for you. Do feel free that you can send messages if it's not working. Hopefully there's not too much of a time lag. If it's if it's looking like a triangle, then you've got it the wrong way up. So if I was using it the other way up, ignore this if it's if it's the right way. But if you had a triangle, one way becomes a triangle, the other way becomes a square. You want it as a square. There we go. So our next step, I hope you're all together on this point, is to take the end point and we're going to fold it up. So, uh, yeah, I hope you can use this for a little hunt on Sunday. I'm rather looking forward to sharing the rabbit with you as well next week. It'll be a little bit more of a complicated one, but we will get there. And I've been understanding the principles of it. I think you have to understand how things work. It's like teaching anything, isn't it? You have to know what you're doing first. There we go. And then turn it to the back. And then again, lifting up that point. And then folding up to the top. There we go. I hope this is just a nice little moment when you're just concentrating on this. And then hopefully everything else just disappears and it gives us a break. And I think every time you put in that fold, it just adds that little bit of pressure and gets rid of it. There we go. So where you've brought up this, I want you to next to bring it down. Can you see? I'm trying to make sure I don't cast a shadow. But that top bit, bring it down to the middle, like so. There we go. And then again, turning it to the back. I think I've done the wrong fold. Oh, Fiona, what's wrong? 
what went wrong? <laughs> Are you able to say? I saw a little message there. Uh, it'd be good if I if I get you back on track. Are you able to say, Fiona, what's wrong? Did it not look like a square? Can we go back, please? Sure. Right. Actually, I might go and get, I think I've got a square already, so I'll, I'll be back in just a second. Whoops. So I'm keen that we all uh, stick together. So I have kept, go back to the square. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. That's really helpful. In some ways, Zoom would be better because we could see each other. But I'm quite, this is quite a good way of sharing it for everybody, really. So can you see this is a square? Have you got this square, Fiona? Because actually getting it to a square is the important thing. So if you have all of these open flaps at the top, take one of these sides and fold it down. Can you see? So it's at the top and fold it down. Like so. There we go. Did that make sense? I see. Good. Excellent. I'm really keen that I keep you all with me because I know there's nothing more frustrating than it not working. And turning it to the back, and again, that top layer, folding it down. Because this is all so three dimensional, isn't it? And we're attempting here to do it on film. But actually, this is the way that I've mostly learned origami is through YouTube. There are loads of excellent YouTube videos. So I do recommend if you think of something you'd like to make, you can look up. But I hope in a way this is quite nice because we're folding together and it's this period of time. So your little flap at the bottom, I'll put that one aside. So where we brought that down, we then bring that up. hope I'm maybe explaining it a little bit clearer this time. Can you see? I've just brought that up. And for everybody else, I hope, hope you don't mind. We'll just take our time because we're here as a group. Ooh, trying to get the shadow so you can see. There we go. And turn it to the back. And again, this bottom, bringing it up to the middle, like so. So you've done the same thing on both sides. Again, okay, I'm trying to get the lighting. Is that good? Looks a bit like a boat or something at the moment. Okay, right, we're gonna now go onto the strip of paper, which I hope you hope you saved. Keep your strip of paper. This is gonna be a basket, but for now we're gonna make the handle. So I've got this long strip. It's great use of an A4 piece of paper or letter paper, whatever you've got so will be fine. So if we just fold it in half lengthwise, like so there we go and then open it up and then bring it into the middle so it's like a very long pair of curtains can you see i folded it to the middle that's it and then the same thing on the other side, taking it top and bringing it into the middle, like so. And then it should easily just fold in half again. So it's quite strong by this point. Lovely. And then take your nice long strip and fold it in half. There we go. I think the rabbit may take us a little longer, but it is very cool. <laughs> it's all about persistence. There we go. And there's a satisfaction in that. So we've made our handle. I hope that's worked for you. And we're then going to add it to the basket. So can you see, I'm going to tuck it behind that little flap and it should fit just perfectly. Can you see? I guess you're not only trying to look at this, you're also trying to look at what you're doing, aren't you? But you can always later on rewind um, to 
turn it to the other side and again I'm gonna tuck it underneath like so and keeping it all in the middle I'm trying to reposition that there we go and then to sort of keep it in place we're then gonna fold it up and this sort of locks it in place I'll try and stop that slipping but in effect evening oh hello evening i hope this isn't too late for you but welcome we're we're part way through making a basket we're also going to come onto a heart and thank you so much for joining us folding things this must be an origamist <laughs> love folding things so you're quite likely to know this but it's so lovely to i really appreciate you joining us it's lovely to feel that we're here together and turn it to the other side and as I was saying a little bit earlier on as well I'm going to be joining someone in Tehran on Sunday who's going to lead a fold to make an amazing moving mouth out of origami so again this bottom edge folding it up like so there we go it's lovely to see those messages it just make me know that you're there there we go so hopefully that's locked in place. It's sort of looking like a basket, isn't it? So next, this top layer, we're going to fold to the middle, like so. So this is this is quite an advanced piece, really, isn't it, Rima, that you learned from your granddad? It's quite a lot of steps in it. There we go. I wonder where he learnt it from. There we go. And then again, folding it this way. We're actually in a moment going to reverse these folds, but I think it's easy that we're doing it this way. So you can see what on earth's going on rather than tucking it away. There we go. And then turning it to the back. Are you all keeping up with this? Am I going too fast? Is there anything I need to explain more? So again, taking this and then folding it to the middle. Red line there. I'm trying to get the lighting so you can see it. It's a little bit darker at this time. There we go. But I thought this is quite good after work sort of time, end of the week. Sort of a weekend. <laughs> Not quite the same. Excellent. Good. Fiona, I'm glad it's making sense. Brilliant. And you'll be left with a very cool little basket at the end of this. So hopefully you've done that on both sides now. Now, all we're going to do next is these little flaps. I want to just reverse that fold. What, Rima? Yes. He was an accountant by day, but very creative. He also taught himself several languages. Wow. Your granddad's very cool. Oh, this is so stimulating, isn't it? Languages and origami, all very stimulating for the brain. So we're going to take this flap and reverse it. I'm presuming, Rima, that this is all the same as you, as your piece. I actually found in origami instructions how to do this. Good website called origami instructions. So you're sort of basically tucking these underneath. So you're taking this and you're just bringing it the other way around so it sort of disappears from view and actually it's going underneath there. It feels quite hard to show to show you, which is why I thought it was best to do it at the front and then reverse. And you see I'm tucking it away and then the same thing on the back, so turning it round. Excellent. Yeah, that's right. Oh, thanks for holding things. You're right. You can always watch this slower. I'm trying to go reasonably slow, but um, it's it's always hard work learning something new. And the brilliant thing is you're giving yourself this chance to do that. And you just have to be very patient with yourself. Excellent. So we're going to reverse that fold. Great, Rima. I'm glad this looks this looks good. Yeah, and I've actually, if you look under the videos that I've done, I've sort of pre-recorded one as well, which is better daylight when the kind of um, the basket's surrounded by lots of hearts. And so you might find that easier to follow. So this flap, again, reversing it underneath. Okay, this is all three-dimensional, so it's a little bit hard. I'd normally get my hands on what you're doing and show you, but 
this is how we have to do it at the moment and how brilliant that we can say hello because we wouldn't have done if it wasn't for this so great we're getting there so actually it's quite close i hope your piece is looking like this it's a sort of a flat pack glass kit at the moment so these sides you pull down and fold down and actually just that process is beginning to open it up can you see and consider what you're doing now i always think your first one just think of it as a draft this is your first time of doing it so it may be that you wanted to do it a second time you'd find it much easier and actually you'd maybe get it that little bit better i think origami is all about practice i tend to make lots of something that's how you get good at something so again this flap i'm going to fold down we're almost there it's a brilliant fold hmm. thank you rima i really hadn't done this before lovely and now it's looking a bit of a strange shape so just put your fingers inside and pull it pull it out of it and it's flattening quite easily you see i'm just flattening it a bit that's it put your fingers in and it's quite a spacious little basket actually hmm. So at the moment it's got these two flaps which i mean they look nice actually it looks like a little hamper like a little picnic um but if you take these pieces and you can then again reversing the folds it's on the outside but you can change it so it goes inside and in some ways it'll look a bit neater um there we go and the same on the other side so we're almost there and I will show you as well briefly how to make a heart because I've made lots of little hearts in my basket. Why not? They're very nice to put onto windows as well. So again, tucking that in. I think most times this has ended up being about half an hour, which is hopefully about the right sort of time. I'm keen that we're not rushing. Last sort of finishing touch, it looks quite angular, doesn't it, the basket handle? So we can pull it out and shape it a little bit. There we go, and da da! Look at that! I hope your baskets worked well like that. And you really can go and put things in that. I, it feels fairly strong. Pretty good. Fantastic. I'll have to send a picture. Excellent. So, Fiona, you've made it then, presumably. Well done. Oh, that's so good. It's so much more fun, isn't it, doing this together? Yay. So, we could also make um, a heart as well. Does that sound a plan? It's, it's a very simple fold. I showed it a little bit earlier on, but it's a nice one. And as I've said, I have rather like making hearts and putting them in our windows because it's just, it just cheers yourself up. And anyone who sees it, I think, will feel a bit more cheery. So I'm going to show that to you as well. That's the extra bonus treat. Okay. So again, I'm going to get a piece of paper. So if we get another piece of paper, I think the white actually will be better just to show you because you can see the lighting on it a lot better. So I'm going to make my heart a little bit smaller than using the whole sheet. So I'm just, just to make it a little bit smaller. Oh, yes, origami is so satisfying. Exactly. I think it's getting things right, isn't it? So, again, satisfying. Yes, it is satisfying. Yes, I realise that's what you meant. So I'm just going to fold it in half just to make a smaller piece. Oh, I'll direct this down. I agree. I think... It's getting it to come together just right. I think the secret to it really is taking time, actually. People say, oh, I can't do it. It's because they're just not taking the time. Just take your time and you'll get there. Lined it up, given it a nice strong fold. It is as simple as that. It's about being patient. And I, all I'm doing, actually, is I'm trying to cut, effectively cut this piece of paper in half. So, again, I'm showing you from basic principles of just... It's satisfying in itself, isn't it? Nice noise. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to make again another square. So my slightly smaller piece. Oh, okay, now I have to pay attention. Oh, well done, Rima. Yes, because this is, is one maybe that you haven't done before. It's again, it's a traditional piece. It's quite simple. 
So it's not many steps at all. You'll be amazed how simple it is. Oh, is it half a half a A4 piece? So what would that be? A5, I suppose. It's fine. You can do it whatever size, but a really big heart looks a bit it looks maybe a bit over the top. So I've simply cut a piece of paper in half. So folding it over, again, just making a square. Oh, and another thing you could do is have pre pre-made squares for yourself for this but i'm just keen to build up people's confidence because i always felt that i needed special paper and that's not true so again getting rid of this strip this time we're not going to use our strip it's not quite as clever as the handle again getting rid of that strip there like so hopefully this is your half hour wind down on a friday There we go, and we'll get rid of this strip. So, <laughs> we're almost there for a heart, believe it or not. It really is this simple. So you've made your diagonal line already. Take your piece and fold it in half, but only do a little tiny mark in the middle. So line up those corners and then just can you see I'm just doing the very middle it's just to show you where the middle line is it's not actually to do it don't do it all the way across there we go so it looks like that and then take the top or the bottom it's the same thing at the moment and fold it to the middle can you see again I'm tending to press on the board you see, so I brought it to the middle there. Okay, nice crisp folds. Then take the bottom and fold it up to the top, like so. You're keeping up. Can you see? We're almost there, believe it or not. We're then going to take the side and fold it up to the top. Can you see? In a straight line. You can see it's almost, it's half, half a heart, a bit of an angular heart at the moment. But we're almost there. That's it. And hopefully this is nice, Rima, because you've, you're then doing something that's new as well. And then the same thing again. Folding it up. Like so. And then the only thing we need to do next is just make it a little less angular. So simply take the sides and can you see all I'm doing is I'm just folding over that edge just to soften it that little bit. Obviously you can do this any size piece of paper. I just thought, not a massive heart, that's all. There we go. And then the tops. Take it and just fold a little bit over. Fold a little bit over there. And that's it. Well, oh, a cutting mat, craft knife and steel rule are, most are almost essential. Mm, if you can cut paper, you can do so much more. It's very satisfying cutting your own paper. That's true. I use it a guillotine, actually. It'll be second nature before you know. Yeah, cutting's great too. I agree. I, I've just gone for least amount of tools because I figure that people won't have special equipment. But I agree. If you're if you're cutting things with the right tools, also a beautiful art form in itself. Well, yes, Japanese kirigami means cutting paper. Yes, I saw these on your Twitter page. Ah, good. So Rima, so this has been new. So that's for that's for all of you. So you've got hopefully your basket. Your heart, you can make maybe little ones. Um, if you use coloured paper or different paper, this little another little basket I've made. So I hope that these will bring you a little bit of a little bit of joy just from that paper and that time together. Um, it's been it's been great working together, and I'm wishing you a a good weekend to come and keep safe and keep well and. Yeah, keep up those doing nice things for yourself. It's it's uh 
it's obviously the most challenging of times for people. Thinking of you all working in hospitals very much at this time and how much we all want to support you and try and encourage you and most of all to say thank you for what you're doing. So I think a heart's really appropriate. So best wishes to you all. And I'll be coming back next week again just to show you. I've been learning. I don't normally do many animals, actually. But um, learning how to make little rabbits. They're quite cool, aren't they? So I'm quite excited about this. You, it's a few more steps than what we've been doing, but you'll, yeah, you'll be, you'll be learning learning this as well. And they're quite nice three dimensional shapes. So maybe you can make yourself lots of little rabbits next as well. Excellent. Well, take care, and uh, hopefully see you next week. I'll this video will be on there. So if you needed to go back to it with anything new it's um you know it's tricky at first and it gets easier and then you just feel a sense of achievement for being brave I think from Fiona it looks so lovely in red yeah I agree with the heart yeah your support means a lot oh you're so welcome well thank you really appreciate everything that you're doing and yeah and look after yourself take care everybody have a good weekend i hope you can do a little bit of a hunting the kind of fun things in life that, that are very much needed at this time so take care and i look forward to seeing you next week uh, although i'm not seeing you you're seeing me um, and as i mentioned I happen to be doing um a fold well going to be led by a fold from ali who's from tehran who just randomly got in touch and has offered to do to do a fold so I thought, why not? Why not meet some people um, in Tehran? So you can keep an eye out. If you look on the Facebook page or on Twitter, you're welcome to send me a message and I can send you the Zoom details. So if you wanted to join in with that, that would be quite an experience just to have met somebody else across the world. How lovely that people are reaching out. So look after yourselves and have a, have a good Easter, I hope. Take care. Bye-bye.